Good morning, folks. Today our star is still quiet in the Earth-facing position, but the heliosphere has been disrupted. Also, we've got one of the best news article lineups of the young 2016 thus far. I'd like to begin by noting that this plasma filament is still here, still at the limb, and still towering high into the corona. Can't stay there forever, big guy. Let's come to spaceweathernews.com and check out the last day on our star. Most of what you see is surface pops and rotation-induced apparent shifts in some areas. But over on the left, the only thing even remotely resembling an Earth-directed event was that little surge there. No real chance of space weather from it. But if you look north and further east, back up and across behind the limb to the far side, you can see a release in the corona. It was indeed a significant CME put a perturbation on the heliosphere, and immediately broke the tropical silence on Earth with the formation of a new Earth spot in the Indian Ocean. Of course, the X-ray flux still shows that solar flaring is anemic, one sunspot group, and all the umbras are positive right now. Not a recipe for big events. The solar wind is a bit more interesting as the speed increased over the last day. Globally, we're doing all right, no storm conditions, but locally it's another story as shown at Karuna with a level 2 event. Tropical development cuts the magnitude of seismicity, but above-average Alaskan tremors are now complemented by a nearby volcanic eruption. Aviation industry, forced to work around it already, also had above-average quakes in Haiti and Greece. We should have eyes on Indonesia as well today. An amazing paper is out describing how our solar system may have had super-Earth form in the inner system and helped clear the orbits inside of Mercury. This ties directly to the building sea of evidence that our solar system went through a monumental shift with planets and chaos. This is bolstered further today by a second release that details the youth of Saturn's moons. Apparently, they are younger than the dinosaurs, which may be an understatement, but remember, this is a mainstream article coming out with a very non-mainstream idea. Folks, it appears we might have a signature of the coming grand minimum. Back then, during the Maunder period, pole reversals on our star were irregular and out of sync, and that is precisely what we are seeing with the current SPF scenario. The trend is heading towards the exact situation described in this paper. Something interesting here as well, in terms of relativistic electrons, goes west measures more than double the flux of goes east. Not only is a cause for this elusive, but what it means for space weather watchers also needs some thinking and some work. We'll get into that last one on Fly on the Wall or Deeper Look episodes, but for more on the state of our star and on the planets in chaos in the past, there's a bunch of material in the Observing the Frontier section of SuspiciousObservers.org found by clicking premium on the menu bar. We're not done yet, folks. You know winter is overstaying his welcome to the north in the United States, but this is Florida. I imagine major hailstorms at Disney are not the most common weather scenario Mickey's used to. And this, that low we've shown for days cresting the UK actually brought winds strong enough to bend a crane arm. We're going to come round to our top Earth spots and the storms they produce as we show pressure and radar forecast, followed by some current global conditions and shots of our star to close. It's 4.15 a.m. in the desert. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.